we just saw your film that not only did you star in, but you also wrote and co-directed. What, what inspired you to make this movie? Um, actually, we had a real haunting that we experienced in the brownstone that we were living in in Brooklyn. It was my husband's, my husband's parents' brownstone. We had moved in there. To, we went to a place where there would be better schools and that kind of thing. The kids were one and three when we did that. And by the time Sydney was like a year and a half old, this spirit started to attack her. And the, the hauntings got more and more intense until finally there was like a, a moment where I interacted with the spirit and it told me its name and it wanted me to make the movie. And I, I felt it was too exploitive originally because it was like, nah, just, you know, this is a really sad story about a very tragic family. And, but then every time I would stop writing, the hauntings would get worse. And finally, there was one night I was like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And I sat down and I was writing and writing and writing. And then all of a sudden, I looked at everything I'd written and I thought, you know, I, this is just not right. It's just not right. And I closed the computer and I went and I laid down in the bed. And it was the parlor floor of the brownstone. And the bed was in the very back and the computer's in the very front. And I have this old chair that's in the very front. And um, I could hear someone small slip off the chair and slowly walk over to my side of the bed and stand there looking at me. I could feel it. I could sense somebody was standing there. I could hear the breathing, but I couldn't see who it was. And I knew that it was him. And I was like, okay, all, all right, I'm just going to finish it. And I'm going to make the movie and everybody will know who you are. Just let it be. And then I did. And how, do you, did you stay at the Brownstone? Um, yeah, we were there for like another year and a half. And off and on, there'd be a little like hello from him. Or he'd say, you know, Debbie. <laughs> And even my daughter would hear it. She'd hear someone say, Sydney, in the hallway and that kind of thing. But then it became more of like, like when we moved, we actually got together and we spoke to him and we said, you know, don't haunt the new family. But if you want to come with us, you know, our hearts are open and you are welcome to join us. Because we were used to him at that point. And, um, but he didn't join us. I didn't learn this until after seeing the movie that your real life kids play your kids in the movie what is it like working with them my kids are so cool and fun yeah, they, they did really... such a they were great actors yeah they... I, I was just thinking it was great casting on Donna McKenna's part that she cast them as your children they're really good kids and we have a really good time together and you know they they had been acting before that they were both sad before we started the movie um I just love them and I love working with them and you know, it's so difficult when you have actors on set that are minors and many times they'll have stage parents yeah, yeah. and it's just like, it's not worth it. It's better to not make a movie with children in it than to have a stage parent on set. So, you know, when I, when I was writing even, I made sure that I wrote it specifically for them and I used a lot of my, my son's personality with the reality TV stuff and everything. I mean, he, he's always like spouting crazy facts to me and I'm like, oh, okay, Matt, whatever. That I, I use that, yeah, I use I like, I, I, and I, I wanted to like make the kids feel as comfortable with who they were playing so they could just be themselves as much as they could. But um, Matt, is still kind of angry with me that I okayed his wardrobe being so dorky. He thinks it's dorky. I'm like, dude, that's like, that's New York City film cool. That's not dorky. <laughs> and um, Sydney, um, she was really good at playing like a scary kid. Like, she was really good at it. And I think it's because, um, you know, having had the real haunting as a baby, she just went there really easily for pretend. You know? Yeah, but I love them. I think I'm going to keep them another couple of years. <laughs> Do you think they'll continue acting on their own when they get older? Yeah, I mean, they go out, they have a manager, and they go out on auditions and stuff like that now. And um, I don't know, Sydney, I think Sydney is going to be a director, and I think Matt's going to be a producer, honestly. But one of the reasons... He's very savvy, because I, I interviewed both of them as well, and yeah, they're That's just very so articulate and just... <laughs> Well, they've been around it since they were very little, so, but that's, you know, I, originally I didn't want them to ever act until they grew up, and I was like, wait a minute, but that's like what my problem was. I wasn't allowed to really pursue acting until I was, you know, 17, and I thought maybe if I had pursued it as a child, I could have gotten it out of my system and gone straight to, like, filmmaking, 
So I'm like trying to help them out. You know, it's like, okay, if you're going to get over it, then get over it now so that like you can like, you know, have a better path or different path or, or be sure that you have the right path. So. And what was it like working with Eric Roberts and Kathy Moriarty? They are so amazing. Like people, that level of icon, because they are icons. I mean, anywhere in the world you say those names and people know who they are. And there's a thing, like there's a reason they are known and it's because they're just so good. And they're so, like, willing to, like, play and be there and this and that. And, and nothing is ever really a big deal. It's not like, you know, there's no prima donna crap going on. There's no, you know, if one of their agents calls and says, well, you know, they need this, then, you know, they were the first ones to stand up and be like, what do they know? They're not here. And they'd jump in and be like, come on, let's do this. It's really fun. So um, I have nothing but amazing things to say about those two. I just, I adore them. They're fantastic. They're really, really, really fantastic. And if Eric Roberts didn't work so much everywhere else, I would have him in everything. And Kathy, you know, she's got three kids, and she lives in Long Island, so it's, like, it's kind of hard. Right. So, you know, anytime I can cast her, I'm like, please come be in the movie. Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> she's so good, isn't she? Yeah. I mean, it's just like, even now, I mean, I edited those scenes, and I, it still, like, chokes me up when she tells the whole story about, you know, her parents. Yeah, that was a really powerful. Yeah, it was, oh, I just love that scene with her. It's like one of my favorite scenes in the movie. She's so good. Well, is there anything else you want to add? How you could tell everyone where to find it? Um, well, it's going to be um, at Amazon. Uh, it, it opens uh, on VOD, and it's available on lo- um, for sale um, next week on March 17th. And uh, you can get it at Amazon. It also streams on Amazon Prime, iTunes, Time Warner, Comcast, Blockbuster. And um, you could also buy it directly from my distributor. And I think you can get a cheaper rate, too. It's Breaking Glass Pictures. Okay. And they are, they're just so great. I really, I'm so happy that, you know, they took yeah. it on. They're great. great. Well, thank you so much for having us here. Thank you for coming. Yeah.